not be living anyhow and you believe that one day you will die and then all the bishops in the earth will gather and then conduct a mass for you do sacrifice for you pray you into the kingdom of god that is a philosophy from the pit of hell how you live here on earth will tell you where you will end in eternity In my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. Blessed be your holy and mighty God. We give you praise and honor. 
take absolute control today. I take authority over powers, principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I bind them, I render them impotent, and I command them to give way that the word of God might prevail right now over the lives of people and over cities of the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, Papa, have your way today. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I want to welcome every one of you on board again today. Such a wonderful and beautiful day the Lord has made that we should be glad and rejoice in it. I want to take your attention to something that we neglect. So simple, but very important. If you must have two things here on earth. One, if your life must be prolonged here on earth. And two, if you must be blessed, you need to, there are two people in your life that you must honor. And that's why I'll be looking at, be a blessing to your parents. Be a blessing to your parents. And I'll be reading the book of Genesis chapter 25 verse 28. Genesis 25, 28. Genesis 25, 28. And Isaac loved Esau. The reason is very obvious. He said, because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Hmm. And Isaac loved Esau. And then the reason is given, because he did eat of his venison. I'll show you two people you must honor you must be a blessing to if you must prolong your life and if you must also be blessed Isaac the son and heir of Abraham had two sons and, and they were Esau and Jacob and without doubt Isaac loved both of them as parents will love his children but he had his preference, and something made him to have that preference. His affection was with Esau over and above the regular parental love. It's natural, there's nothing you can do about it. Somebody may say, is that, is that supposed to be? It is so natural. There's just nothing you can do about it. He loved the children, but he had preference over one for a reason. Bible is very clear about that reason why Isaac regular why Isaac regularly ate the venison that Esau his son usually gave him that's the reason he he was always giving him this venison well he, he was a hunter and so we can call it bush meat pepper soup and he was enjoying that on a regular basis not just you know once but on a regular basis so Isaac, in his own words, described this as venison. He called it savro meat, you know, such as I love, such as I love. Look at, that's how King James Version puts it in Genesis chapter 27, verse 4. And make me savro meat, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. Wow. That thy soul may bless thee before I die. If you read it with another version, there's a version that says, and prepare for me a delicious food such as I love and bring it to me so that I may eat that my soul may bless you before I die. Simply put, Esau Minister regularly to his father, giving him something he loved to eat, and his father loved him for that. I want you to note number one that when you bless somebody regularly with what he or she loves, you promote the bond of affection between you and that person. It then becomes possible for you to receive the best that such a person can offer. 
if you never learnt anything from Isaac before now, I want you to learn this. And that's number two point I want to make. Learn to minister to your father regularly. In fact, your parents, your father, your mother, learn to minister to them on a regular basis, consistently, giving them venison that they love, giving them something that they love. You will promote the bond of affection between you and your parents and their soul, just like that of Isaac, we continue to bless you. And then I want you to note as I begin to you know drag it home that the father we're talking about here in the first instant has to do with biological parents biological parent that's why i said there are two people that you must be a blessing to so number one is your biological parent or are your biological parents when we talk about blessing your father it's also important that you bless your mother you don't need to discriminate about that they brought you to this world and most likely raise you up to maturity you owe them honor you owe them material blessings you owe them so you know sustenance especially in their old age when you give them these regularly and consistently you make it possible for god to bless you in fact with long life there's a way ephesians puts it ephesians chapter 6 ephesians said it is the a commandment with a promise Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right Two, to honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise and what is that promise that he may go well with you number one and that you may enjoy long life on the earth two blessings it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life here on earth mm. i want you to note number three that whatsoever you do for your parents is a seed that you are sowing your own children will rise up one day and do same to you Listen carefully to me. My message is not long because I will soon conclude it. Whatsoever you do to your parents is simply a seed that you are sowing which you are going to reap with time. Whatever you do to them, positive or negative, your children will rise up one day to do same to you. If you bless them, your own children will bless you tomorrow. If you honor them, your own children will honor you tomorrow. You take care of them in their old age, your own children will take care of you in your old age tomorrow. You curse them, your own children will curse you. Dishonor them, your own children will dishonor you. You don't take care of them, wow, you have sown a seed of abandonment even in your own old age. I was told the story of a particular girl who was so wayward and uh, she so ruthlessly death with the parent, the mother to be precise, until the woman, because of what she was doing, had a stroke. And then she was hospitalized. This girl still came to the hospital there and provoked the woman. The woman nearly died and so the woman became angry. The only thing she said is, calling her name, she answered, he said, everything you have done to me, your children will do much more to you. And that was it. The woman died. And then today, that lady had about three, three, uh, three children. The first boy started smoking Igbo for if I was smoking Indian hemp and then he ran mental and he's 
roaming about in the market. The second girl is a prostitute living in the hotel. The third girl, that one, that one is just, you know, that one is just roving everywhere, almost naked. So they, they have so much given this woman high blood pressure that she is alive, but to be dead is better for her. Because that was what she sold, where the parents were. And today, she's reaping it. I want to ask you a question. When last did you give a call to your dad or your mom? When last did you visit them? To know how they are faring. This period of lockdown, you know how difficult it's been. When last did you check on them to know how they are faring? When my dad was alive, in fact, from the day God started helping me to make him come, I took it as a responsibility. You know, some people do not know that these aged people go to hospital. They don't care. Some of them are even where to do. Some children where to do, doing very well for themselves, but they don't care about their parents. They don't know that they eat. They don't know that they are, you know, taking care of, they are taken to the hospital. They don't know that they clothe. They don't care about them. I took it upon myself ensure that they do not lack food. I can go without food, no, but not my parents. I was taking care of them. And each time I visited my parents, my dad would say, it shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. He kept blessing me. I was taking care of them, taking them to ensure if any time I hear anything about them, I'll carry them to the hospital. Like they, you know, parents, sometimes they will say, oh, you know, you shouldn't do that. They will feel you are wasting money and all that. And sometimes they pretend that they are okay when they are not okay. But I will force them, whisk them up to the hospital to take care of them. When my dad was about to die, he invited me. I came and I sat by his side. He knew he was going to die. He called me, I answered. He said, my parents blessed me before they died. And that's the same thing I'm going to do for you. You have been a good child. And he prayed for me and said, it shall be well with me. He released a lot of blessings unto me. And then he told me, as you go back to your base, this is the era of phone when they call you for anything come back and do the need, needful. And I knew he had told me the last word. And I went back to my base. I couldn't sleep that night. I had the first call around 12. It was somebody who needed my prayers. Another one around 2 a.m. because I didn't turn my phone off. It was another person who was dying and needed my prayer. So I slept off around 5, 6 a.m. and I got the last call. And lo and behold, they said they needed my attention at home. When I got there, he was gone. But everything he pronounced about me, I am seeing them today. You need to be a blessing to your parents. Honor them. Honor them. You are sowing a seed that you will reap tomorrow. Sometimes I hear about people who beat up their parents. Wow. Incredible. I said, they human beings you slap your dad or your mom, you beat them up and they are crying. Ah, I hear about ladies who quarrel with their mom, insult their mom, I mean, embarrass them, call them names, and you are giving them high blood pressure. You are sowing a seed that you will reap tomorrow. Hmm. Your biological parents, these two promises follow, honoring them. Number one, prosperity. By the time they say you are blessed, you are blessed. I am telling you, 
when they place a curse on you, you are cursed. That he may go well with you. When I was a little boy growing up, we were living as tenants in a particular yard. And our landlord that time had sons. And uh, there was one that was a vagabond. And that was the first son. Then I heard the story that he was once in America. He traveled to America. Uh, he, but, but before then, he had an issue with He insulted his father. The father said to him, you will be a vagabond. It will not be well with you. He said, that's bullshit. You can't decide my destiny. I will become somebody like Piam. He traveled to America. He lived in America for several years and finally was deported with nothing. And he came back home and became a vagabond, no house, even getting to 60, not married, and was, was parambulating everywhere. And as we were growing up, then I heard another story that one day when he realized himself that he went to his father and fell before him before his father died and said, Dad, I'm so sorry, forgive me. The father now blessed him and said, he shall be well with you. And that was it. Today, the man, even though late, he started, you know, you know, prospering when he had already become old. But he, he is doing better today because of that blessing. So, I challenge you today. Say, that it may go well with you here on earth. And two, that you may live long here on earth. You don't want to die suddenly. You don't want to die prematurely honor your parents the second person that you need to honor in your life are your spiritual parents what do i mean by that your pastor your prophet your spiritual leader who ministers the word of god to you regularly it is scriptural that you bless such a person with material things like you bless your, your, your biological parents. Galatians chapter 6 verse 6 says, He that teaches you, he that blesses you with a spiritual thing. He said, is it, is it a crime if he shares in your material blessing? He said, you should Share all good things with he that teaches you in spiritual things. When you do, also you'll be attracting the blessings of God in your life. Because in the mouth of that your prophet lies your breakthrough. And also lies your, lies your breakdown. Your breakthrough or your breakdown. Hmm. Do you know, as I conclude, let me add, uh, do you know that many people are not blessed by the ministry of their pastors because they have refused to play their role of being a blessing to them? This life is all about principles, and God's principles are stronger than principalities. If you refuse principles, you are bargaining for wrinkles. Okay? The principle is what you sow is what you reap. You cannot reap where you did not sow. This is why a lot of people, their pastors are blessing people outside. People come from outside and receive miracles from their pastor. But they themselves go empty. Why? Because they don't honor their pastor. They don't also sow in the life of their pastor. Those people are far off. So honor their pastor. Take their, if I, for them, their pastor is an angel. They so believe their pastor. Whatever he says, they believe. Whatever he says, they do. With that heart, they come to the pastor. And even be a blessing to the pastor. Do what you cannot do as a member. So seed into the life of Be a blessing to the pastor. And whatever the pastor says, bam, you see it happen in their lives. I don't know if you have noticed that most times people come from outside, they carry the whole blessing, the miracles, and they go. Whereas the people who are members are there because they have become too familiar with the pastor and they have no regard for him again. They have no honor for him and they can challenge him. They can do anything with him and they go home unblessed. Honor your spiritual father. 
honor your spiritual father. Do not come to a point where you think you have arrived and then you can begin to trifle with them or challenge them anyhow. I invited a guest to minister in our church and as I visited him in his hotel room, he shared a pathetic story with me. He said he used to have a member who happened to be very rich. He had buildings. In fact, in a particular street, he had almost the whole two-story two building in that street. And the money he had entered his head and he started challenging him. If the pastor now became a house boy to him, he orders him around, uh, uh, talks to him anyhow. This pastor was agonizing until one day the pastor became so angry. He, he called him and said, is it because of this money that you, you have made that, uh, that has made you arrogant? You were nothing when I came here. It was through my ministry that God blessed you, opened doors for you. And because you have become so arrogant, this money God will take it away from you. You will go back to the village and the only thing that will happen to you is that you will start pursuing rabbits in the bush and you will be catching them. He thought it was a joke. Wahala came, problem from everywhere. He started selling the properties one by one, one by one, until he finished selling all of them. His business collapsed. Like play, like play, bam, he packed his things and, and went back to the village. And uh, what he now does is going to pursue rabbits in the bush and all that. And of course, that was the only blessing the pastor left with him. He will always return with one rabbit to cook pepper soup for his family. When he told me this story, my heart was broken. I started pleading with him. I said, please, go and release the man. Please release the man. Because if you speak into the life of the man again, I'm sure that God is going to restore him. Be a blessing to your pastor. Be a blessing to your prophet. Honor your prophet. I have a pastor's son and he invited me to minister in his church. When I got there, as I was ministering, they carried one woman. If you see the woman, the woman was so big. What is wrong? They said the woman had kidney failure and then they could not walk again. And they carried the, when they carried the woman to the altar, that pastor came to me. He said, Papa, that's what he called me. He said, Papa, when I came to this church, I was abandoned by everybody. This is the only woman that took me like a son and took care of me. Make sure that I was not hungry. He said, Papa, if there is any Anybody that should die in this church, it is not this woman. This woman desires to leave. My heart was broken. I laid hands on the woman. The woman fell on the ground. I said, bring her up again. I laid hands again. She fell the second time. Bam! That was it. Kidney failure. Kidneys were restored. This woman just got up and left. And the, every, the, 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 all the swollenness deflected. And the woman was healed. Why? Because... She was a blessing to the pastor, and the heart of the pastor went out for her. The pastor said, if there is anybody that should die in this church, it's not this woman. There's a person it would have been, perhaps it wouldn't have been a headache to the pastor. Honor your parents. Honor your physical, biological parents. Honor your spiritual parents. If you do, two things, very important. It shall be well with you here on earth. You will not struggle to prosper here on earth. You will just see obstacles, roadblocks being dismantled for you. The backing of your parents, their prayers, their blessings will make way for you. And two, death will not terminate you prematurely. That's the promise. The Bible says the first commandment with a promise that your days may be long here on earth. A lot of people have have summarized their life because of the way they treat both their biological parents and their spiritual parents. This is my advice to you this morning because this will go a long way in prolonging your life here on earth. Coronavirus will have no power over you because you have fulfilled the spiritual principle and then you have right to live. And then secondly, prosperity will be yours. It doesn't matter the lockdown, doesn't matter the situation, all over the world your case will be different. When people are saying there is a casting down, you will be saying there is a lifting up for me. Bow your heads in prayers. With my mouth will I make known Thy faithfulness
faithfulness thy faithfulness with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever I will sing of the mercies of the Lord with my mouth with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness oh thy faithfulness with my mouth will I make To all generation, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I was listening to Bishop David Oyedepo. He said, one of the reasons God blessed him is because he honored his parents and took proper care of them and that they were pronouncing blessing on him saying it shall be well with you and today it is well with him it's a practical matter i don't know wherever you are now is there any way you have offended your parents or abandoned them not taking care of them May God forgive you and give you the grace to change from now. If you have dead treacherously with them and now they are dead, may God forgive you. And whatever negative effect in your life, by the reason of the anointing of God upon my life, which is superior, I nullify every negative thing following you in the name of Jesus Christ. I release you from any curse in the name of Jesus Christ. Every retrogression, every, every premature death waiting to happen, I terminate it today in the name of Jesus Christ. May God give you the grace to turn a new leaf today. Have you not done what you're supposed to do with your pastor, your, your spiritual parents? In the name of Jesus, receive the grace right now to begin to do it and as you do, may the oil of God upon his life, the grace of God that follows him, begin to manifest in your own life from today in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have not given your life to Jesus, I'd like to pray for you. That's a starting point for you. That might even be the reason why you are behaving the way you are behaving. You can bow your heads in prayers and say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me, sinner. Come into my life today and be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. I denounce Satan. I denounce sin. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray it shall be unto them according to their confessions. Let their names be cancelled in the book of death and be transferred into the book of life. Give them the power to live for you from today. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you are sick, in the name of Jesus, I command healing to rest upon you now. From your head to the sole of your feet, be healed. I say be healed. As I'm talking to you now, get up and do what you cannot do before the power of God is upon you now to set you free. Receive strength in that leg. Receive strength in that hand. Receive life in those eyes in those ears receive life now in that part of the body that is paralyzed be healed in the name of jesus i command barrenness to be terminated right now in the name of jesus lo can be thou terminated right now may god surprise you by giving you children 
I bless you today in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I decree that today shall be the best of your days. God shall be with you going out and your coming in. And everything you have pursued in life, you shall overtake. The miracle begins today. In the name of Jesus Christ. You shall not die, but you shall live and declare the goodness of the Lord. Father, I lift up in most states. In most states shall be secured from coronavirus. I lift up Nigeria. Please stop the death. Stop the spread. And let coronavirus be extinguished out of Nigeria, out of Africa, out of the entire world. Bring healing to the world. Bring restoration. Bring restoration also to the economy of the world. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. All right, my friend, you want to give an offering, a donation, or pay your tithe? The account details are right on your screen right now. Use it, and uh, we will appreciate that. And God will bless you. And if for prayers and counseling, you want to talk with me personally, you can call the number which is plus two three four eight zero three four zero nine five one seven one plus two three four um, eight zero three four zero nine five one seven one. And then I want to remind you to be with me again this evening, 6 p.m., for Atmosphere of Possibilities. I'm going to continue the message on. It's not over yet. And you will sure be blessed. Tomorrow, Sunday, I shall have a one-hour live service. One-hour live service, 7 a.m. So tomorrow is not going to be 6 a.m. It's going to be 7 a.m., one-hour live service. Uh, from the altar of the church, we shall worship and then deliver the message which you will be part of wherever you are and then tomorrow evening 6 p.m tomorrow 6 p.m i shall have a phone in program when you will have opportunity we open the lines and you can call me for prayers you know prayer requests and to share testimonies of what god has done in your life so far that will be tomorrow 6 p.m so join us and I'm sure your life will never remain the same again. I'm so glad coming your way today, and I hope you were blessed. My name is Reverend Better One Able Reverend B, saying, See you, and God bless you.